I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on limits. We will discuss indeterminate differences and how to find their limits in this particular video. You have learned that application of L'Hopital's rule helps us to evaluate limits for indeterminates, right? Now, let us try to see what is the meaning of indeterminate differences. So the differences of the type infinity minus infinity, these are indeterminate differences. Now the question is, why is it an indeterminate, right? So let's answer this question. Why is infinity minus infinity an indeterminate? Now, what we understand is that 0 over 0 is indeterminate, right? Now, from there, we can actually conclude infinity minus infinity is indeterminate by following following logic. We know 0 over 0 is indeterminate, right? Now, 0 over 0 could be written as 0 times 1 over 0, which is as good as 0 times infinity. So that is also indeterminate, right? Now, if I take log of 0 times infinity, then what do I get? I get ln. What I get is ln 0 plus ln infinity, right? That's what I get. Now, ln 0 is approaching minus infinity and ln infinity is approaching plus infinity. So, we get infinity minus infinity. So, that should also be indeterminate, correct? So, that is how we conclude that infinity minus infinity is also an indeterminate. Now, the strategy to solve questions related to infinity minus infinity indeterminate differences, we have taken three examples. The strategy here also is to write as ratio of functions. We actually classify this in our category of type B, similar to 0 times infinity, right? Similar to this. So we have exactly similar strategy to solve questions related to infinity minus infinity. Here are three examples to work. So let's see how to solve them one by one. So in the first example, we'll evaluate limit when x approaches infinity for x minus ln x. So let me rewrite. We want to find limit x approaches infinity for x minus ln x. Since we have to write as ratio of two functions, it's better to take x outside as a factor. So we get limit x approaches infinity x and here we can write 1 minus ln x over x. Now, what is the limit for ln x over x? So let's look into this as the limit x approaches infinity. Well, this is when we are considering large amount, it is the same as infinity over infinity. So we could apply the L'Hopital's rule on this, correct? That is to say, it will be same as the limit x approaches infinity for their derivatives. Now, derivative of ln x is 1 over x and that of x is 1 and that clearly gives you the answer as 0. Once you substitute infinity, 1 over a large value is 0. So, so what we notice here is that this portion is 0. So what we get here is limit x approaches infinity for x. Now if I have this and x is approaching infinity, then I get infinity as my result. So that is my answer. Is that clear to you? So that is how we are going to solve it. 
right? Now let's take the second example, which is a trigonometric function. We need to evaluate limit when x approaches 0 for 1 over x minus cosecant x. So if I substitute 0 here, I get infinity. And if I substitute 0 there, I again get infinity. There's negative in between. So it has indeterminate differences. To solve such questions, we need to write it that as a ratio of two functions. So we could write this as limit x approaches 0, 1 over x. Let me first write cosecant x as 1 over sine x, right? And then we can actually take common denominator and we get x times sine x numerator being sine x minus x. Now here, if I substitute 0 here, I get 0 on the top and 0 in the denominator. So at this stage, we have 0 over 0. So that's an indeterminate of type A. So this is our type A. That is type B. Where we need to write as a ratio of two functions. So here we can apply L'Hopital's rule. That is to say, we'll apply the L'Hopital's rule, find derivatives, and then the limit could be evaluated, right? Derivative of sine x is cosine x, that of x is minus 1. Here we need to apply the product rule. So 1 times sine x, which is sine x, plus x times cos x. Now if I write 0, I get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And here, if I write, I get 0 plus 0, which is also 0. So still, we need to go further and apply L'Hopital's rule once again. So we get what? We get limit x approaches 0. Derivative of cos x is minus sine x, and that is 0. Here, derivative of sine x is cos x. We have to apply the product rule x1, which is giving us cos x, and then derivative of cos x is minus sine x. So we get x sine x with a negative sign. Now this could be simplified. We could write this as limit. x approaches 0, minus sine x in the numerator, and the denominator is 2 cos x, minus x sine x. Now if I substitute 0 here, I get sine x 0 will be 0, so I get 0 in the numerator. And here if I substitute 0, I get 2, right, minus 0. So I get 0 over something, so that gives me 0 as the result, right? So basically, the limit of this particular function is 0. Is that clear to you, right? So that is how we can find the limit of this function. Now let's take the last example, which is, now in this example, we'll find limit when x approaches 0 from the right side, 0 plus. We got 1 over e to the power of x minus 1 minus 1 over x. If I substitute 0 here, anything to the power of 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So I get infinity here. And here also, if I substitute 0 in the denominator, I get infinity, right? So that is the case. Now, we can take common denominator to solve this. We have limit x approaches 0 from positive side, the denominator being x times e to the power of x minus 1, cross multiply, e to the power of x minus 1 within brackets, correct? Okay. Now, let's open the bracket first. We get limit x approaches 0 plus, and we have here x, uh, this is uh, minus e to the power of x plus 1 over x times e to the power of x minus 1. Okay. If I substitute 0 here, that is 1 for me, this is 0, minus 1 and plus 1 is 0, I get 0 in the numerator. Substituting 0 will give us 0 in the denominator also. So now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. So we could write this as limit 
x approaches 0 from positive side, derivative of numerator and denominator. So, derivative of x is 1, derivative of e to the power of x will be e to the power of x. And in the denominator, we have to apply the product rule. Derivative of x is 1, so we get e to the power of x minus 1, plus x times derivative of this function, which is e to the power of x. At this stage, if I again apply x equals to 0 here, I get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And in this case, it is 1 minus 1 is 0, and that is also 0. So it is again 0 by 0. So I'll again apply L'Hopital's rule. So we may have to apply it a couple of times, right? So we get limit x approaches 0 plus. Derivative is now minus e to the power of x in the numerator. Here we have e to the power of x. This is 0. Then again the product rule. We get e to the power of x plus x times e to the power of x. Well, that gives you e to the power of x common. So we could write this as limit x approaches 0 plus minus e to the power of x in the denominator we have 2 e to the power of x let's say e to the power of x is common so we get 2 plus x so we could cancel e to the power of x and e to the power of x now we can substitute 0 and get our result so if you do that what do you get you get minus 1 in the numerator and in the denominator you get 2 plus 0 which is 2 so our answer is minus half. So this particular limit is basically equal to minus half. Correct? So that is how we can actually find the limit of these functions. So what you saw in this video is that if you have indeterminate differences, then writing in ratio form helps us to get into type A type of indeterminate where you can apply L'Hopital's rule to get the limit. So that is the concept here. I hope it works. Thanks for watching and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great. Share my videos with your friends. Thank you and all the best.